Hi, I'm Mr. Money. Today I want to share with you how you can start investing with just 1,000 ringgit. What can you invest with 1,000 ringgit? Because 1,000 cannot do much right for now. It's just 1,000 ringgit I'll put in a petty cash box at home. 一千快一半了啊！一千半半了，可能有点难投资，在银行吧，也许。Something that it generate more profit and that's a like a high ROI for myself. Property, maybe I can rent a room for like the deposit and stuff. You put in a fixed deposit as well. Hmm, probably the highest return one. Invest total is the best. Personally, in my belief, there are two kinds of investment. The first kind, that requires your active management and more of your attention. And the second kind, that is more passive and requires less of your attention. Today, I will share with you five kinds of investment. And I'll share with you its pros and its cons. Number one, the stock market. What is investing in stock? Investing in a stock basically means you own a company. This gives you an equal share of the company's asset. And also, when the company's operation is making profits, they will give it back to you in the form of dividends. So, there are two ways of earning in the stock market. Number one, through dividends from the company's profit. Number two, through the capital growth of the company's stock value. The benefits of stock is you can have potentially high return. For example, Nestle Malaysia has grown 116% in stock value over the last five years. It is also fairly liquid as you can just sell off the stock on the KLSE board at any time as you wish as long as they are buyers. However, the downside is the price can be quite volatile. There's no guarantee that the stock is gonna go up in price or go down under and the price can fluctuate quite a lot within a day or a month or a year. Secondly, trading in the stock market also requires you to have some basic knowledge in financials. You need to be able to understand financials report at least a little bit or maybe technical chart reading. So if you do not know any of those and you are just buying based on what people say, mm, it is not too different from gambling. However, if you are willing to spend time to study about the stock and learn, this can be quite a good investment for both short term and long term and it may give you significant gains. Number two, rates. Real estate investment trust. What is it? Basically, it is a property management company that buys property with the public's money. Manage the property and make money from it. The profits, after minusing the management fees and related costs, will be redistributed back to the shareholders via dividend. The benefits of rates are, number one, you can participate in the property market with a very low cost. Number two, it is very liquid. It means you can cash out anytime as you wish because it is traded on the KL Stock Exchange. Number three, generally every year you would get a dividend of about 5% to 8% return. The downside is however, the price of rates is more volatile compared to owning a physical property. And the dividends, it is not guaranteed by the property management company. So how can you start investing in rates? Basically, rates is traded on the KL Stock Exchange. So as long as you have a CDS account, you can invest in rates. Number three, ETF. ETF is basically exchange traded fund. It is a type of security product that tracks stock index, commodity, or a bundle of assets. To put it in simple terms, they basically put a bunch of product together cut it into one small piece and sell it to you. For example, the FTSE KLCI tracks the 30 largest company that are listed on KL Composite Index. Wow, so does it mean that when I buy FTSE KLCI means I just bought the 30 largest company that are listed on KL Composite Index? Yup, you're right. So, the performance of ETF will directly mirror the performance of its underlying assets. So, what is the benefit of ETF? 
Number one, diversification. Because owning just one unit of ETF means that you own a bunch of other assets. Number two, it is highly liquid, so you can easily cash out on the KL Stock Exchange. Number three, its performance directly reflects the performance of its underlying asset. Number four, it has a much lower management fee compared to unit trust. Number four, unit trust. So, just like rates and ETF, it's also a product that bundles a bunch of assets together and cut it down into a small piece and sell to you. The difference with ETF is however, the fund manager of a unit trust fund will have to actively manage the fund according to the objective and strategy that is laid out in the fund prospectus. Although this leads to a higher management fee and service charges compared to ETF, but the fund manager will actively manage the fund. This means the fund manager have to actively select and pick the right securities to maximize the returns of the fund. Theoretically, it will be able to minimize loss and maximize gain even when the market is volatile. This essentially means that you are investing in the team's ability to manage the fund for you. This is like hiring a fund manager for yourself. If the fund management team manages it well, you will get good returns. An example of a well-managed fund will be Kenanga Growth Fund, which has shown an annualized return of 15% over the last 10 years. This means, essentially, it has given you 15% returns per year over the last 10 years. Now, you know why you're paying the management fee for? However, on the downside is, if a fund is not well managed, you may get less return or even negative returns. Finally, P2P loan. What is P2P loan? Basically, it means peer-to-peer -peer loan. It basically means that you're lending your money to people. Companies such as Funding Society provides businesses with a crowdfunding platform through a peer-to-peer -peer financing solution. Basically, you lend your money to businesses to expand their business and they pay you back interest. However, it is not guaranteed that you can get your money back. But if it's all good, you may get up to 10% return. Hence, choose wisely. So, these are the five types of investment that you can start investing today with just 1,000 ringgit. If you enjoyed this video and find it beneficial, please share it with your friends. Because you can change lives by spreading money education. Also, don't forget to like my Facebook page and subscribe to my YouTube channel and change your life with more money education. Till then, I'll see you next week.